What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 18.4 Beta 3 to registered developers and soon to public beta testers. Now along with this release, we also got the third beta for iPadOS 18.4, watchOS 11.4, macOS Sequoia 15.4, tvOS and HomePod version 18.4, VisionOS 2.4, and then we got the third RC for macOS 14.7.5 and 13.7.5. But of course, in this video, we are focusing only on iOS 18.4 beta 3 and talking about everything new in this new software update. Now, as far as the size goes, you can see it came in at 1.14 gigs on my iPhone 16 Pro Max, so a decent size there for a third beta. If we add into our settings to check out the new build Build number. If we go into our settings, general about the new build is 22E5222F. So we do have an F at the end of the build number. We're getting close to that A, but we still have at least one more beta to go, potentially even two more betas. And we'll talk about that near the end of this video. And then if we go down and check the modem firmware, that is 1.54.02 for the 16 series. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 18.4 beta three? And the first thing has to do with back tap. So if you back tap right here, if you double tap on the back of the phone, you can see that we get this banner up there. So that was new in iOS 18.4, but we saw that in the first beta. However, you'll notice that the text up top is a little bit different. So I took a screenshot here from beta two. This is beta two right here. Take a look at the back tap text at the very top. It's not quite as black as it is now here in beta three. So a slight change to the UI there. And you can see the bottom is a little bit less uh, opaque now. So, you know, not as dark of a black color as it was in beta two. So a minor change there to the banner itself. Now we also have a change in the settings for this. So if we head into our settings and go into our accessibility and then down to touch and we go down to the bottom till we get to back tap we now have a new toggle here to show banner so that was not there before it would just show the banner by default every time it would show this banner but now you can disable that so now if we turn that off and double tap right here or do back tap you can see that it will not show the banner so there we go it doesn't show it every single time now. So it's good to see Apple giving us flexibility here and the ability to turn off a banner for something like Backtap. I'm not a big fan of the banner. I expressed that in the very first beta that I noted this feature, but it is nice to have the option now if you do want it to be on or if you want it to be off. In the wallet application, if you tap on the three dots next to the plus up in the top right, we now have pre-authorized payments. So we have a wording change because before it said subscriptions and payments. So of course, when you go in there, it will show all all of these services and websites that are pre-authorized to use your credit card. Also in the WhatsApp application, if you go into your emoji picker here and then you go into Jinmoji, it actually works now. Before, the Jinmoji menu, this whole interface here, would not even open on previous versions of iOS 18.4. And if we tap on the little cat right here, it will actually prepare that sticker and put it in as a message in WhatsApp. Now, if we head back into our settings and go to the camera section and then go into camera control, we have a very slight change right here. So if you go down into the launch camera section, you'll notice that it now says camera instead of camera app. And if you go into there and you change it to something else like magnifier, for example, and then you go back, the main like heading for that setting now says magnifier, whereas before it would still say camera app and then it would say magnifier over there to the right. It was kind of confusing. Now it's a lot more easy to understand, you know, this setting. And you can tell right away that when you launch the camera, it will launch magnifier instead of thinking it's the camera app if you just look over here on the left. So it's kind of confusing before. It's easier to understand now with the wording change. In the Apple News application, if we go into the new food section, which is new in iOS 18.4, if we go into one of these recipes, so we'll just go into this recipe right here. For example, we have a few changes to the UI. So first off, you you can see that underneath right here where there's multiple changes actually so first off you can see it no longer says by the person it just shows their name underneath of the name of the recipe and then it shows yield it will yield four servings instead of just saying servings four servings it says it twice and then right here for read the story, you can see that little box there is a little bit different. The glyph icon for cook is slightly different here in this latest beta. Also, if you go down to ingredients, we no longer have this really awkward little gap right here like we had before. And then also if you go down here, we have a minor change as well. So when you get to the timers, it now has them in orange instead of being 
in gray. And here is a different recipe and you can see the UI changes right here. But if we go down, you can see that for ingredients, it used to say yields for, now it just says yield for here in beta three. Also after installing beta two, some users were not seeing the new Siri UI, but that has been fixed here with beta three. So if you're having issues with the quote unquote new Siri UI showing up, that should be fixed here after installing beta three. You also just need to make sure that Apple intelligence is not still downloading the models. Sometimes under here, it will say downloading. And if you see that, that's probably why your Apple intelligence, you know, the new Siri UI is not showing up. But after that finished, some people were still not seeing it with beta two. So again, that has been fixed with beta three. Now, if we take a look at the release notes, we have some interesting things to talk about in here. So first off, you can see that we do have those resolved issues for Apple intelligence. So that could be why we are actually seeing that fix for the quote unquote new Siri UI right there. And then if we go down here, we have a really interesting new feature here in beta three. So it says apps can now use nearby interaction while in the background to perform ultra wideband ranging if the app starts a live activity as it goes to the background. So I do not have an example of this working just yet. I don't know of any application or any circumstance where I can show this as an example as of right now. But once I do have an example, I will show you guys in a video. But anyways, going further down, we do have a couple of resolved issues for notifications and for Siri. And then if we go down even further, we have some Swift UI resolved issues. And then the big resolved issue here is related to Wi-Fi calling. So Apple has finally fixed Wi-Fi calling for US cellular customers. That was a bug on 18.4 betas one through two. So the first beta and the second beta both had basically Wi-Fi calling would not work unless you downgraded. So that has been fixed. And then of course we have the writing tools resolved issue as well. Now, as far as the performance goes here on beta three, I would expect it to be about the same as beta two. I wouldn't really expect too big of a jump since we are still on an F build here. So performance was actually really good for me in beta two. It was much better than beta one. So I would expect a little bit more of the same here with beta three. We might see some slight improvements. We did see quite a few resolved issues in this beta as far as bugs go. But as far as overall raw performance, we could actually see a bump here in beta three as well. Although I would expect it to be pretty minor, especially compared to the beta one to beta two jump. But here is the Geekbench six test that I did. So we scored a 3467 on the single core, 8586 on the multi core. So slightly lower than what we scored before. But of course, I will run another one and let you guys know that score in Apple Weekly later on this week. Now, as far as battery life goes, it's hard to say right now since it is so early on. It does actually seem a little bit worse than beta two for me, actually. So, you know, it seems like I am draining a little bit more than I was in beta two. But of course, I will be living with this, you know, this whole week. I will be installing this on my main device. So I will report back and let you guys know if battery life is better or worse than it was in beta two. But right now, it seems maybe the same, potentially even a little bit worse. But again, I will update you guys in Apple Weekly on Saturday. All right, so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up is going to be iOS 18.4 beta four. So we should expect that next week. It seems like Apple is on a weekly release schedule right now. So we should see beta four on the week of the 17th. Apple has been loving these Mondays lately. So after that, we could even see another beta. So potentially even a beta five on the week of the 24th then RC on the week of March 31st, and then potentially a release on the week of April 7th. Now, in the middle of that, before the final release of iOS 18.4, we're hearing that Apple's gonna release an iOS 18.3.2. So we should be seeing that at some point in the next, potentially as early as this week. So we could be seeing 18.3.2 as early as later this week or early next week. So be on the lookout for that. If you are not on the beta train, if you're watching this video while you're on the public releases, we should be seeing that. Now that will be a very small update. That's gonna be simply a bug fix and security patch update date, but that is still something that's coming pretty soon. So yeah, that is iOS 18.4 beta three, a pretty light update as expected for a third beta of a 0.4 update. And if, unfortunately we don't have any of those Apple intelligence features, because again, we are most likely going to see those in iOS 19 at this point, which is shaping up to be one of the biggest updates ever. It seems like so iOS 19 is going to be huge. And it looks like that's when all the big features are going to come now since they've been delayed. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did give it a thumbs up, also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future iOS 18 update videos just like this one. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.